Hey there, and welcome to the first Pro Tools video of Cinema 9-2 here at LACC. Uh, let's see, so we're learning Pro Tools. So the first thing you want to do is open up Pro Tools. Um, if you already have a Pro Tools session, now remember in Pro Tools projects are sessions, um, then you could just go to that, double click on it, and it'll open right up. Let me show you what that looks like. So I have my sessions in this hard drive right here. I have them pretty well buried in here. So Cinema 092 dash, uh, sessions. It's called the Ugly Duckling Project. Got this from my Pro Tools class, Ugly Duckling 2. So basically, every time you make a new session in Pro Tools, it oddly makes a folder. Um, which is your session folder. And inside that session folder, you have your audio files, your bounced files, which is basically when you make your final stereo mix. That's where this goes to. Clip groups. Um, you can combine clips together and call it a clip group. That, that's where they go. Fade files, pretty much how it sounds if you do fade ups or fade downs or cross fades. Um, basically, those files need to get what they call rendered, and that's where those render file goes. Go. Uh, session file backups. Uh, Pro Tools will back up your, your sessions in the background, so in case it crashes, at least you've got a backup you can go to. And then video files. Um, if you are doing a video post project, the video should be placed in here. Um, this is actually important information. Um, everything you do in Pro Tools goes into your session folder, except for video files. If you're doing an audio post project, you actually have to take your video file and manually place it into the Pro Tools session folder into a folder called video files. Um, it's good to do that because when you go from computer to computer, then all you have to do is take your session folder because look, open up your session folder, everything you need is in here. All your audio, oops, all your audio files, if there's any bounced files, we haven't worked on this project yet, so we don't have any yet. Video files, fade files, and of course, your Pro Tools session file itself. And I've got two of them here because I've got one that we're going to work on in class and then one that's finished. But let me show you what it looks like. Double click on it. Takes a minute. Sometimes it takes a while for it to find everything, but it's linking everything up that's in this folder right here. So if you had stuff all over the place, um, that would probably not work out too well. Um, so it's good to keep everything in one folder. And as you can see, everything is here. You sound like rah, rah. Yep, there you go. Okay, now what if you wanted to start a project from scratch? Well, let me show you. First, we got to close the session. You actually have to physically close the sessions. Okay, so you open up Pro Tools, and if you go up to File, down to Create New, boom, here we go. The first thing that happens is you have a dashboard. So the dashboard is the first thing you see when you create a brand new session. What are you going to name it? Well, see, before I named this Ugly Duckling 02 and it created that folder that we just saw. So I'm gonna call this, uh, let's call this Ugly Duckling 06. Um, so this will create a folder called Ugly Duckling 06, and within that folder, you'll have your audio files, your fade files, your actual session file, and your bounce files folder, <clears throat> and a video files folder already to um, basically just gobble up whatever you throw into the session. So that's the cool thing about Pro Tools. It forces you to be organized by creating a session folder that everything automatically goes into, except your video. The video you have to manually place in there. Everything else just automatically goes in there. Okay, so number one, Ugly Duckling 06. Let's go on down the line here. Local storage, right here, local storage. Um, you always wanna keep it on here. Um, unless you're working in the cloud, and that's only if you're collaborating with people over the internet, um, for our intents and purposes, we choose local storage, which means it'll just save everything to our hard drive. Um, you can also create from a template. Um, this is pretty cool. 
Um, but we're going to be working with templates later, and this is a little more advanced. So we're just going to start from scratch. So remember this. Go down here, File Type. So in Pro Tools, we've got WAVE files, and we have AIFF, which is the Macintosh version of WAVE. Um, we want to choose WAVE because WAVE is the industry standard, and you don't know if you're going to a PC or a Mac uh, if you're trading this off to another computer somewhere. So WAVE is just the safest bet. And the cool thing is WAVE is 100% compatible and smooth on a Mac and just as smooth and compatible on a PC. It's just the smartest bet. Bit depth. Um, this depends on what your video person gives you, <clears throat> but if they're going by the standard, it'll be 24-bit. Remember, audio for video or audio for cinema is 24-bit uh, bit depth. Sample rate. Um, again, this it has to match what your video person is giving you, but um, if they're going by what the standard is, it should be 48 kilohertz. So we click on 48. And then input output settings. This basically has is similar to our templates up here. Um, it's you usually just want to keep it on last used unless you're working with sort of a custom system, maybe that has like a 5.1 like input output board or something like that. But if you're working on this at home and you just have sort of minimal hardware besides your computer, you just want to keep it on stereo mix or better yet, last used because who's the last person that used it? You interleaved. You always generally always want to have this selected interleaved is basically just another way of saying stereo files so you always want to have interleaved on unless there's a specific reason why you're importing stereo files and wanting to separate them into two mono files um, so interleaved okay and last but not least prompt for location this is it's going to ask you where do you want to save it um, watch create See, the reason I like that is if I chose the other option, it would just automatically saved it to whatever folder was listed there, which I can't even tell you what that was. So I always have it on prompt for location because then it asks me, and actually manually asks me, where do you want it? I want to put it on my external hard drive uh, just right on the top. Boom. And look, brand new window, ready to go. So there is basically opening up a new Pro Tools session.